Right. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of you here on uh, holiday weekend. Um, you kind of wonder, you know, in Florida especially, uh, who's going to come to church on a holiday weekend. Those of you who are visiting with us because uh, you're here on vacation, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you're only a visit here, visitor here once. After that, your family, no matter if you never come back, we've adopted you. So uh, those of you who are here today, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I got a good word today. Man, I was studying and getting myself ready. And I, I, I usually, I, I mean, we have space here. I mean, I can go in the conference room and meet and stuff like that. But usually when I'm working, uh, I call Wawa my office because I go out there and sit on those round tables outside and get on the free Wi-Fi. And... Um, and I handle all my emails and stuff. Like, I got Wi-Fi at my house, too, but I live in Florida. I don't want to be inside all the time. Come on, somebody. That's good preaching right there. Somebody should amen that. You live in Florida. Shoo. Somebody say, well, well, you just, yeah. Or Oklahoma just had an earthquake. Two of them, back to back. Uh, five points something. And then I saw where they're having tornadoes on the East Coast. And somebody said, well, you just had a hurricane come through. Yeah, well, you can call that a hurricane. I mean, it was kind of a hurricane. It was a one. And it just kept right on going. Went somewhere else. Come on, because we prayed. Amen. And you live in Florida, so you ought to be shouting right now. Amen. <laughs> and so I went to Wawa and, and uh, sat down outside and uh, was working on my message. And, man, just got to happy. <laughs> so I got a good one today. And I expect amens. You say, well, I don't know if we do that at my church. Well, you ain't at your church. You're at this church today, and I'm saying, I want to hear some amen in this morning, all right? That was a weak response. All right, well, anyway, um, we started a series last week called Safe, and um, we talked about it's hard to be safe if there's, and enjoy safety if there's not something to be safe from, and a lot of Christians don't like to talk about that. They don't want to talk about what's out there and what can get them and what can hurt them. And what, they don't want to talk about that, especially faith people. They don't like to talk about, they don't want to acknowledge that there's a, but the thing about it is, is and, and, and here's the thing, they think by not acknowledging it that it's not going to, like it's going to go away. Jesus said you guys speak to the mountain, this mountain, this, this mountain. What does that mean? Don't look at it and go, oh, that's not there. That's what we do all the time, though. No, he said, you got to say to this mountain. Now, you can't tell something to leave if it's, not, if, it's, if it's already gone. That's not what faith does. Faith does not, you know, just act like things aren't there. It acknowledges that they're there. An umbrella does us no good unless there's something to keep us dry. Or if, there's, if the sun's out and you're one of those people that catch on fire as soon as you walk outside... This is your best friend. If there's nothing to protect you from the rain or the sunlight, th this really, you know, you got to start inventing things for this to do now. Now, there have been people that do that. You know, I remember last week I talked about they, they use it to reflect light in a, in a photo shoot. If you're a single man, this is now a chick magnet. If it's raining and all you single fellas should have one of these so you got room for somebody right there next to you. If it's raining and you're lonely and you're looking for something, you just get you a big umbrella and walk around where there's people. And if you see a woman walking around by herself, you can be Mr. Chivalry and, and gentlemanly, and this is your best friend. Anyway, um, but this is really meant to keep the rain off of you or the sun off of you. And uh, if there's no rain and no sun, this is, you know, you just kind of have to find other things for it. And that's what safety is. You know, how can you have safety in your life and working in your life if there isn't something to be safe from? And that's what we talked about last week. We talked about that God's will is for us to have safety. And not just safety, you know, uh, for ourselves, but safety in every area of our lives. A lot of times people think safety just talking about us and our well-being and our bodies. And, but safety applies to, come on, your family to your finances, come on, to your health, to your property, to your car, to your house. Come on, that, that, that umbrella of safety should be going over everything you have. Amen. And so um, 
That's what we talked about last week. This week, we're going to continue along these same lines. And you know, I was just thinking about it and, and praying and studying and reading. And you know, a lot of people have, you know, they put a lot of trust in the safety that they can have for themselves, things that they can get themselves. I got 15 life insurance policies. I'm good. I got, I got good health insurance. I'm good. I'm, that's what, and they're relying on that. Other people, you know, I have the safest car money can buy. Got 12 airbags. <laughs> that's good. Other people are relying on the government. Keep them safe. You know, people say, well, you know, if something goes wrong, I'll just call the police. Well, you know how long it takes for them to get there? What are you going to do then? Well, I got, you know, <clears throat> I call it the rocket launcher. Some people call them hog's legs. Other people call them <laughs> big old guns. <laughs> well, that's good. What are you going to do when you're asleep? <laughs> Somebody gets in your house. Amen. Pastor, you're scaring me. Don't talk like that. I'll fight them. That's what I'll do. I'll jump out of bed and fight them. Well, what are you going to do if you don't see them until they're on top of you with a baseball bat? Some of you are like, you're preaching fear in here this morning. If that makes you scared, that shows me one thing. You're putting too much faith in man's safety. Come on, I tweeted this the other day. I told you to get ready for this. You're putting too much faith in what you can do for yourself. Listen, if the police don't come, can you still be safe? Amen. Come on, if somebody, if, if, if somebody comes breaking in your house, can you still be safe? What if, what if old Bessie jams? What are you going to do then? Throw it at him? It's a hammer at that point. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I, I'm all about it. My security people will tell you, I'm a pistol-packing pr pastor. I believe in guns. I believe in, in gun rights. I don't know what your stance is on that. I don't care. I'm not here to have a the political debate. I'm just saying, but I don't put my trust in that. Amen. It's there, but I ain't dependent on it. Come on, I'm not dependent on the police, and I'm not dependent on the security guard that eats too many donuts in my neighborhood and drives around in his little golf cart. <laughs> I'm, not putting him, I'm not putting my faith in him. <laughs> Okay? These things are all good. But you take God out of the equation, and it doesn't matter. And this is, this is something that really scares me about what's going on in the world right now. They're really trying to remove God from everywhere. Now, listen, there's some places he's already been removed from. And, you know, there's been a lot of places that were more, more powerful than the United States is right now. There were other empires Come on, that took over a whole lot more of the world than we have. And there's no trace of them now. None. Just in the history books. Come on, even Rome. People talk about it. They ain't, there's, there's nothing left of the Roman Empire. You know, the Babylonians took over even more than the Romans did, and there's no trace of them. You know why? Because they took God out of the equation. And that's, what's, that's one thing that worries me about this country. And, you know, again, I'm not endorsing candidates or anything like that. But listen, if, if you're, if, 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 if you're going to vote for somebody that wants to remove God, uh, then, and, and I'm not saying any of them do, I'm just saying you better think about that. Because if you remove God from this country, all them bombs that we have and all them tanks that we have and all, that, all them superpower weapons we have, they, they ain't going to be able to keep us safe. Listen, the hurricane that just came through here, look what it's doing to the East Coast right now. It's already killed two people. What is that? Where's, how's our superpower helping that? Where's our weapons helping that at? We can't keep ourselves safe from, uh, uh, from nature. What makes us think that, you know, we're, we're just all superior? And don't get me wrong. I am grateful for our country having, you know, the, super, the superpowers that it has. But I ain't going to depend on it, and the country shouldn't depend on it. Come on, somebody. And you shouldn't depend on it. 
If somebody's trying to, you know, talk about, you know, God don't have a place in government and God don't have a place in this country, and, and that's because they're putting more faith in themselves. And let me tell you something, faith in yourself has got limitations, and you will hit a wall, and there's eventually a time where your position and your power and your might comes to an end, and you still don't have enough in you to get it done. Anybody ever tried as hard as you could and then looked at what you still had to do and you went, oh. yesterday I was cleaning the carpet at my house with the rug doctor, rented it from Lowe's. Actually, it was the Bissell Big Green, I think is what it was, same thing. And uh, you got to go real slow with them things, you know, push the button and spraying it out. You can feel the, the, the brushes vibrating and you go, and, and I did that for, you know, a good hour. And I turned and looked, and I still had the whole half of my bedroom to go. And I was like, <sighs> you, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can go and put a lot of effort into something, and, and when you get over there, uh, you, you just think, man, I, I feel like I've been working for days and haven't accomplished anything. This is the human condition. And you can go and do everything you can do. I have no problem with insurance, and I have no, I have no problem with, with uh, your 45, and I have no problem with your security system, and I love the police. Come on. And I love, the, I love the, uh, the, our firemen. We took, we took baskets this week to the, our local fire station down here and, and gave them three big baskets full of goodies and, and healthy foods and junk food and, you know, comfort food and, and every kind of thing under the sun because, you know, they all got different diets. And we just wanted to bless them because we're grateful for them. And so we went and did that. But listen, I don't even depend on them because if a fire starts... It's going to do a lot of damage before they can get here. Now, they're going to get here and put it out, but the damage will be done. So guess what? I can't depend on them to keep me safe. I can't depend on those things. And in this, this time and, and period in the world with hurricanes and earthquakes and tornadoes, and then you go natural, you could say bombs, somebody coming you know, across the medium into your lane, you know, somebody coming and breaking into your house, some wild shooter wanting to go and lock down a school. Come on, there's all kinds of stuff. And if that talk scares you, you're putting too much faith in what you or man can do. Listen, my kids go to school just like everybody else's. It makes me nervous when people start talking about school shootings. But I do not depend on everything else to keep my kids safe. There's more to it than that. All right? I am not going to put my faith more in what man can try to provide for me than the guaranteed safety that Jesus purchased for me. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 6 is where we started last week. We're going to start here again this week. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 6, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to Twitter <laughs> or your, your blog or your best friend. Come on. Nope. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 8. We're pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Those are our, our texts for this series. But I want you to open it up to 2 Thessalonians, verse number 3, uh, chapter 3, verse number 3. And this is where I want to go this week. But the Lord is faithful. And he will strengthen you. Come on now, here's the, here's the good part right here. And guard you, that, guard, that word guard there is the word protect, from the evil one. Now the word guard here in the King James is, is also protect. 
Uh, it's the Greek word for a watchman. Same, same word. Denotes the activity or office of a watchman whose job is to protect those who are asleep from harm during the night. That's what this means. He's a, he's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you got somebody sitting at your, you, you can go in and go to sleep, and you got somebody sitting at your door, you know, with loaded to the gills. And, and if he runs out of bullets and ammunition and weapons, then he's a deadly weapon himself. He's young. Know, Bruce Lee with all the weapons of Rambo. Come on, somebody. That's what we're talking about. He's, you know, he's undefeatable. Okay. All right. It also means, this word guard doesn't just mean that. It also means to observe or to make a practice of something because that's the way it's supposed to be. Like we observe the law most of the time. Like speed limits. You observe the speed limit, right? I'm not going to point fingers because I'd have to point them all back at me. But we observe the speed limit like we observe the law, like we observe the speed limit, okay? We make sure that it gets done because that's what it's supposed to happen, correct? Now, most of the time. <laughs> how, many of you, how many of you don't shoplift because that's not what you're supposed to do, right? Come on. We don't steal because that's what you, we don't kill, we don't, you know. We don't do, when it's a law, you kind of go, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to jail. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. That's what this means. God's looking over you to keep you safe because, well, that's just what he's supposed to do. That's what this is, this is, this is meaning, okay? This word literally means God is watching over those who are righteous, those who belong to him, to make sure they're safe from the evil one because well, that's just what he's supposed to do. Come on now, you ought to be happier than that. That's just what he's supposed to do. That's the way he set it up. He wants to be the one to keep you safe from harm. <laughs> we belong to him, and he wants to keep us safe. So now we touched on this a little bit last week. And I hope you wore some really good shouting clothes this morning, because I'm serious. I literally got up and almost did the happy dance right there at Wawa. This one made me happy. <laughs> they all do, but this one really got to me. Now, I said to you, safety isn't just for our physical well-being, but it's for every area of our lives. Now, I want to expound on that a little bit this week. A lot of times throughout Scripture, and we, we're going to look at a few of them, but the righteous weren't just protected themselves, but their families were protected. Come on, their flocks and their herds, their crops were protected. That happened over and over and over again in the Old Testament. In fact, if you go in Exodus and look from 7 to 11 during the 10 plagues, all right? Um, <laughs> it's actually chapter 7 through chapter 11. That's, that's, that verse is not on there, so you can take that down. All right? <laughs> Chapter 7 through chapter 11 is the story of the 10 plagues, okay? And it shows all 10 of those plagues coming to Egypt. And every place in the country that th those plagues touched died or were affected in some way, okay? And it happened over and over and over 10 times, okay? So their crops died. Come on, the Egyptians' crops died. Their animals died. They got sick. They got covered with boils. There was, you know, their water supply got polluted, turned into blood. They lost their kids. And I don't mean like, where are you? I mean, they died. Their kids died. The whole country, or what seemed to be the whole country, is affected by what this judgment is happening on the country. Except for one place. One place. Goshen, Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. Goshen was the land where people that had a covenant with God lived. You need to catch this. But on that day, verse 22, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. 
No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. Verse 23. This is the part that made me happy right here. I will make a distinction. Ooh, come on, somebody catch this. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. God made a distinction and protected everything the Israelites had. Listen, they were isolated from destruction, isolated from plagues, isolated. Why? Is it because they're just so good? Absolutely not. In fact, they were such doubt and unbelief people there. They were just barely, I mean, they were, they were, they were in covenant with God by a label only. They were not, there was no faith confession going on. They were like, woe is me. This is awful. This is terrible. Uh, you know, God's forgotten us. And, and, but, but listen, God remembered a covenant that he made with them. And when they, they said, God, are you going to get us out of here? He was like, all right, time to get you out of there. And now here's the distinction. You're safe and everybody that doesn't belong to me isn't. Buckle up. Here it comes. Somebody needs to catch this. When we see catastrophe, come on, we can be spared. Why? God makes a distinction. What's the distinction, Pastor? I have confessed Jesus as Lord of my life. Come on, I belong to him. I belong to him. Now, that doesn't mean God's dumping it out on everybody else, but when it does come from, and we all know where it comes from, where does it come from, somebody? Where does destruction come from? Last week I said bad things don't come from the Lord. Where does the bad stuff come from? It comes from the, from the enemy. Well, when he starts ranting and raving, trying to get to us, come on, it can't get to us. Now, God's not judging those people yet. Their time's coming, and we're all going to stand before him, and that's not happening yet. So when bad things come, and it bounces off of us, Who's wide open to get it? They are. Now, that's listen, that should not make you happy. Those people, they need what we have. That's why we preach Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's why we witness. All right? But on the other side, when bad things are happening, we're spared. You don't believe me. Don't believe me. <laughs> when thousands of people are losing millions of dollars in the stock market and in their investments, come on, we can still be blessed. When everybody else in your kid's classroom has the flu and snot coming out their nose and everything, come on, we can still have healed kids. Amen. You're about to get this. <laughs> Why? Because we have a distinction. There's a bug going around. It ain't coming around here. Why? God makes a distinction. What's the distinction? The blood of Jesus. I'm not any better than anybody else walking around out there, but thank God he was, and now he lives in me and makes it so. Come on. My hope is not in the stock market. My hope's not in the real estate market. Come on. My, my hope's not in the business climate. Our hope is, in, is not in the opinion of some busybody who talks so much about you behind your back. Come on. It is not about those things. It's not a, my hope's not in a politician that can't keep his promises. My hope's not in a security guard at my kid's school. Come on. My hope is in the king of kings and lord of lords and the one who made it all anyway. He's the one who saved us because of his son and our acceptance of him. There's a distinction. Come on, look at somebody on the other side of you and say, I'm different than they are. I'm than they are. There's a distinction. And everybody that gets blindsided, even if something does come your way and it blindsides you, you can stand up and say, you can't go any further, and I expect a full payback of everything you just took from me. Good. Why? Because God is our protector. He's the one keeping us safe. He's the giant umbrella that I stand underneath of. Come on. My kids are safe. My retirement is safe. Come on. My house is safe. My car is safe. My spouse is safe. 
My job, come on somebody, is safe. I am safe. And somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. I'm safe. I told you this is a good one. Go ahead and be bold about it. Don't hold it back. Psalm 91, verse number 2, shows us how to do it. Let's look in verse 1. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in him. Now, I want you, there's a lot here. There's a lot here in this, in this verse. Now, look at those, that first sentence again. Say it with me. This I declare about the Lord. Say it again. Come on, say it like you mean it. Now, what's that third word right there? This I declare. All right, hold it right there. This I declare. Now, you grow up in the South, <laughs> this means something a whole lot different. I do declare. <laughs> this means to actually say it like it's so. What am I saying? He alone. Not the security guard. Come on, not the police. Not the fire department. He alone. I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. He alone is my refuge. He protects me. He watches over me. He keeps me safe. And you need to say that. And say it. And keep on saying it. Some people go, well, you just never know. I know faith people that tried that. And I know all kinds of faith people that have said that. And Man, they're bankrupt. They ain't got no money. Sick. Going. They're losing everything. And... and why are we judging whether something else works based on whether or not somebody else got it? I could care less if 25 people tried what we we're about to try and didn't make it. Why? Because whether somebody else gets it right is not the point. Does that make God's word any less, less real, any less true? Because I'll say it right now, there's 7 billion of us here on the world, about 2 billion are Christians. Does that mean, because the vast majority have not accepted Jesus, that the power of Jesus' blood isn't for everybody today? Well, then why are we so convinced that confessing the word over our lives doesn't always work? And I know too many flaky people that have tried it. That ain't the measuring stick, friends. The psalmist says it right here. I declare that the Lord alone is my refuge. You just never know what's going to happen, though. Now, a lot of you don't have no problem telling me what you're afraid of. You don't have a problem telling me what's hard. And I hear it from you regularly. We need to do this. Yeah, it's just so hard. Don't, don't get quiet. Nobody will know I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah, I know I should be doing that, but it's just, it's just so hard. I, I'm afraid that this is going to happen. Oh, my God. How is that going to happen? Oh, my God. What am I going to do? It's so hard not to be afraid. Well, here we are. Psalm 91. Let's go to verse 3. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. Amen. See, it's not just about your, 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 you know, not being in a car wreck, some, not somebody breaking in your house. He's going to protect you from disease. Yes. He'll cover you with his feathers. He'll shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. King James says shield and buckler. I like that. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly during the day, 
Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand will fall at your side. Another translation says, a thousand will drop dead right next to you. And 10,000 in your neighborhood. <laughs> These evils will not touch you. Now, why is that? Why? Because God makes a distinction. It's a distinction. Now, this is a whole lot more, this is a whole lot different than, oh, my God, what am I going to do? This is a whole lot different declaration than, this is so hard. This is so, this is a lot different declaration and a lot different things coming out of somebody's mouth than, I'm really afraid. A thousand will die right next to me. Ten thousand all around me but not me. Why? Because God protects me. Millions may lose every cent they ever had, but not me. Come on. <laughs> well, you know, the economy's on a downturn right now. So, 2008, when that happened, there were people still buying stuff and selling stuff on major levels, too. There were people buying you know, they just, they jumped in. They're like, oh, everything's crashing. I've had this 20 million sitting around forever. This is a perfect time to spend it. And they started buying stuff like crazy. Millions may lose every cent they have, but not us. Why? Because God makes a distinction. There may be people getting the flu or the chicken pox. Come on, stomach virus. <laughs> these things won't come near me. Why? Why? God makes a distinction, and I'm declaring it. I'm serving notice on all these things. They can't come here. Now, people that, whose hope is somewhere else don't like this kind of talk. Oh, here we go again. Well, how come you ain't skinny rich and happy then? If you know all the answers and speaking the word, how come you ain't got it all figured out yet? <laughs> well, because I got flesh just like you, and I still got to deal with it every day. But those people are the same people that are going to look at you and go, well, you just never know. Let me tell you what you just never know. Let me tell you what that is. That's a lie. It's a lie. And it's been told from pulpits. All across the country and the world. You just never know. That's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. It, come on now. This is the Bible we're reading. Are you still awake? <laughs> I had two cups of coffee this morning. I'm awake. All right. <laughs> Listen to me. This is the Bible we're reading from. Come on, I said this is the Bible we're reading from. This ain't somebody's article that they wrote. Come on, this ain't what somebody else just thought up and thought sounded good. This is the Bible that we're reading from. Hall Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said this is the Bible we're reading from. The same Bible that says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved and you won't go to hell when you die. It says if you declare about the Lord that he alone is my safety. Am I this is the Bible. not something else it's not just some doctrine or theology or it's not somebody's opinion this is God speaking to you directly through somebody else that wrote it down and said now this is the word of God Amen. Amen. Yeah. Psalm chapter 4 verse number 8 says I will both lie down in peace and sleep next part of it huge for, here it is again. For you alone, O oh Lord, will keep me safe. <laughs> What's he saying there? Now, if you know anything about the people that wrote the Psalms, <laughs> not everything was wine and roses. They didn't skip through life. Some of them were fighting giants. Some of them were running from their lives from assassination attempts by the politician in power of the day. Now, what is he doing here? He's making a confession. Yeah, there's an army hunting for me. 
Yeah, there is a giant I'm getting ready to face. Yeah, there are lots of crazy things going on in my country right now. But God alone keeps me safe, and I'm standing underneath that umbrella, and I'm going to lay down and go to sleep, and I'm not going to worry about it. The English version says this, I go to bed and sleep in peace because, Lord, only you keep me safe. God's will is to keep you safe. The things you're facing, <laughs> he wants to keep, you, keep them away from you. Now I got five minutes. You ready? Because it's going to come fast. All right. First way he likes to keep us safe, we'll pick up with the rest of them next week. First way he likes to keep you safe is he hides you from the danger. Amen. Psalm 91 verse 1, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now that word live is the Hebrew word for lodge. Now a lot of us immediately went to travel lodge, some place you stay, Somebody you want to stay, you know, stay, spend the night at. But it's not that kind of lodge. It's when something gets lodged in place. You ever got something jammed in there real good and it ain't coming out? You got to take a sledgehammer and about beat it to death or break it to get it out? Come on, you know what I'm talking about? That's what we're talking about here. Those who wedge themselves, come on, that get stuck, that shove themselves into a place where they can't just be pulled out. That's what he's talking about. He who dwells, dwells the same word, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, when you go and read this, no matter what translation, you get words like covering, protection, refuge, covert, shelter. These, this word is similar to when your hands cover something. Anybody ever gone out in the sun? Anybody ever had the wind blowing in your face? And you, <laughs> you ever been watching TV with your kids? <laughs> Aren't you protecting? That's what this word means. Keeping, you know, <laughs> anybody on the 4th of July or any of you that used to smoke, you get those lighters out and the wind's blowing. Come on, what do you do? It's amazing how we all know to do this. What are you doing? Protecting it from the wind? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> That's what this word means. That is exactly what this word means. It means to hide from you, to keep it away from you so you don't even see it. Now, what, how does that happen? Now, this is the good part right here. If he's hiding us from it, where does he hide it from us? Or why, where does he hide us from it? In the secret place. Now, a lot of people get confused and you start talking about this. What's the secret place? And some of us act like the secret is, is on us. Like, I don't, I don't know. What do I do? And I mean, I just, I mean, when things are bad, I just go, oh, God, what do I do? <laughs> That's not what this means. <laughs> This word secret place does not mean secret from you. It means secret to the enemy. If, if, if it was secret to us, we'd really all be in big trouble. Okay. Now, this was written in a time when people had places in their house. Now, you all know, know that their house wasn't just built out of sheetrock and and wood, you know, they made it out of clay and rocks and, you know, whatever they could just cobble together there and, and, and stones. And, and uh, they would build like a, almost like a cave in their house that they could get in and roll a big rock in front of it and put a big, like a railroad tie in, in it. So if somebody came in their house or an army was invading, they'd just jump in there. Now, we kind of have the similar things today. We call them panic rooms. Anybody know anybody that's got a panic room in their house? Now, Jody's sister and brother and my brother-in-law, they used to live in Israel, right in Jerusalem. 
on the, on the nice side of town, away from the Gaza Strip and all that. And uh, they were, we were FaceTiming them one time, and, and uh, they were taking us a tour around their little apartment there, and it was really nice. And, and they're like, okay, here's all the kosher dishes. We're allowed to, you know, only eat certain foods on these. These over here, we can eat whatever we want, but <laughs> these, you can't put bacon on these or anything like that, which is really bad because my brother-in-law loved bacon. So anyway, so they're showing us around, and all of a sudden, he walks into this room, and there's, uh, you know, uh, a few, you know, like a couch and a few little beds and stuff there. And he, he goes, and he holds up the camera like this, and he goes, listen to this. And all of a sudden, you hear, and then I heard him, and it latched. I said, what was that? He goes, I'm in the bomb shelter. <laughs> and I was like, what? He goes, yeah. This is an impenetrable room in case this area of the city gets bombed. We just jump in here. And I said, that's alarming. <laughs> <laughs> he said, every apartment in, this, in, in Jerusalem has them. Most of the houses have them. People build a house, they build it with it already in there. Now, here's the thing. Where do you think they got that from? It's not just a new thing. Right. This happened in the, in the, you know, way back. Yeah. Old Testament times. They would go and they would be able to roll that rock in front of it and they would be able to wedge it in place. And then they would, you ever heard the, the saying, the name of the Lord is a strong tower? Now, there's all kinds of, you know, variations on that. But they would also, in these rooms, they'd build a ladder and build a, a, a thing on the outside so they could climb up there and look down and see if the robber or who <laughs> is still there. And if they were, they'd just stand there and wait till they got thirsty and tired and left. And if they felt like it, they could look at and go, hey, can't get in, can you? <laughs> that rock's heavy. Yeah, you ain't coming in. And they'd just stay up there in a tower. Come on, looking down. This is what we're talking about. This is what God does when he hides you. He puts you in a place to keep that stuff away from you. We have a place in our relationship with God that the devil can't get to. Now, is that really all? That? Some of you are like, I'm not so sure about that. Then you just need to receive it by faith and amen it by faith because you have access in your life, in your relationship with Jesus, a place where he'll hide you from the things going on. And if you don't think so, let me tell you, you're living there most of the time anyway. Go, go check out another country sometime and see where, where, where those people have are gotten used to. <laughs> the fact that you live here in this country is, is part of the hiding, come on, that God has done for you. There are people in Israel and the Middle East right now that put up with a whole lot of stuff and they laugh. When things happen, they go, well, here, you know, there's a bombing on the south side of town. That's going to mean traffic. And they, they just act like it's no big deal. We have a place, and I'm going to say it again until you amen me good. We have a place in our relationship with God that the devil can't get to. Amen. And we live there. It's a place that God keeps us safe. And there are parts of our lives that Satan can't touch or even get close to. It's in Jesus. And if something's going to get you, it has to come through him first. And last time I checked, that has never happened. <laughs> it's never happened. So what is, all right, so where, how do I get there? Did you accept him? Have you believed in him? Then you have it. You are there. So now what do I do? What does that mean? I mean, if, if I'm in the shadow of the Almighty, what does that mean? How can there be shadow? God's light in him, there's no darkness. That means he's standing literally over top of you. He made a distinction. Come on, listen. I know we all say, oh, he's got the whole world in his hands. I know he's holding all of creation, but he's not bound to do everything for everybody out there. 
He's not bound to do everything for everybody in this world. He's bound, though, for us who've accepted Jesus because he said he would. Come on, he is bound to keep you safe because he said he would. He is bound to protect you because he said he would. It doesn't matter. It's like that picture I showed you guys a few weeks ago of the house in Houston where everything on the streets and streets around it can be blown all over the place in one house standing there by herself. Everybody around you can get sick and, and fall over, and you'll be good. Come on. We're going to talk about next week other ways that he keeps you safe, and then we're going to wrap it up with how do I invoke that? Because when I start feeling sick, well, doesn't that mean I'm getting sick? Well, you, want to, you definitely want to come back, and you're going to get part three and maybe part four. <laughs> we'll just see how this goes. All right, heads bowed, eyes closed. You need to say it and keep on saying it and keep on declaring it. The Lord alone. Come on. The Lord alone is who keeps you safe. The Lord alone is who protects you. It's not somebody else. It's not something else. The Lord alone. The Lord wants to keep you safe from all harm. Keep your stuff safe. Keep your people safe. God is ready to put a covering over you to keep you hidden. And you need to be walking in that. You need to receive that. You need to make that part of your life. Daily basis. All the time. Well, if I could just have this. Nope, stop looking there. God wants you to have that, he'll lead you right to it. Nothing wrong with it unless you're putting your trust in it. Where's your trust at today? Where is it? Where is your trust at today? Is it in the things that man can do? Is it in the things that you think? Is it in the things that you, you know, feel comfortable with? Or is it in the person who saved you from hell? Is it in the person that's going to give you eternity in heaven. Where's your faith at today for your safety? Father, I ask today that if there be those that are with us, that, Lord, that they've been putting their faith elsewhere. They've allowed their self to be talked into something else. They've been uh, looking at other things and, and, and saying, yeah, i got to do that, and yeah, I need to do that, and Lord, it's not because you're leading them. It's because they've just been reacting out of fear. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you show them, give them a, a, a faith boost today that they need to hide under the shadow of you. I pray that you'll help them. Lord God, that if they've felt some kind of condemnation, Lord God, that you'll help them to reverse that and feel hope. Lord God, that they'll start to see that it's you calling their attention to something because you want to keep them safe. and You want to give them victory over those things. I ask that you'll help them see that today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask two things. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, listen, you're not under any shadow and not under any covering, and you're standing out there by yourself. They used to say, make the old saying, naked to the wind, meaning unprotected. You don't have nothing, nothing. Your ability's limited. You can't do anything. But with him, everything's better. So if you don't know the Lord, you've never had a relationship with him, you've never been introduced to him, today's the day that that can happen for you. And I want to know who I'm praying for. And I'm not going to call you down front here. I'm not going to make a big scene out of this. Some people say, well, it needs to be a public display. I'm public enough. I know who they are. So if that's you, raise your hand right there at your seat. I'm going to pray with you right there at your seat. I need to make the, the Jesus Lord of my life. Anybody want to take me up on that? I see no hands. I'll take that to mean that nobody or everybody here is, that knows the Lord. Now here's the next invitation. If you're here today and you've been putting your trust somewhere else, You've allowed yourself to be so consumed with your own safety and well-being that you've really forgotten 
you've really forgotten how much God wants to keep you safe. And it's almost been, oh yeah, and we're believing for protection too. And you know, you're, real, you're realizing that you, you need to really up, the, up your faith game here and, and really <laughs> get back to believing and get back to declaring that he alone is your safety. Nothing wrong with insurance, nothing wrong with any of the things we talked about, nothing wrong with having, you know, guns, and there's nothing wrong with protection, nothing wrong with 911 on speed dial, none, there's nothing wrong with that. Unless that's where all your faith is. And you need to make that switch today. You've been finding, some of you have probably been pacing the floor since your kids went back to school, worried to death about them. If that's you and you need to make that right before the Lord today and put your trust back in Him, so that you can get restful nights of sleep, relax a little bit while they're at school, not sit and worry about them all the time, worrying about your spouse or worrying about yourself. What's going to happen? I want to pray for you. Can you slip your hand up right there at your seat? Nobody? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Don't be ashamed. I just want to pray for you. The Lord's going to strengthen you. You don't need to be worried. You don't need to be afraid. The Lord's got you. You're underneath his protection. Praise God. Father, you see these hearts today. You see these hands. Lord, you know their hearts. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you just comfort them. Lord God, as they begin to exercise their faith in this direction, I pray that you will strengthen and you will answer answer their faith, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And we loose the peace of God that passes all understanding into their life right now. But Lord, as they look at worry and they look at fear, Lord God, it won't shake them because they'll know you're with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You definitely want to come next week. We're going to talk about the other ways that God can, can keep you and protect you. And then we're going to talk about how to activate that in your life.